Carlos Alcaraz to serve. And we are ready to go here on the Rod Laver Arena. So sit back and enjoy. Ready. Mouth-watering contest. It's Alcaraz to kick back. us off. Nick, you mentioned the, the big forehands from these two players. What, what are you expecting in this match? You know, talk us through the, the layers that could prove decisive. We've talked about the speed of the court here in Melbourne, how fast it's playing, especially 15, with new tennis five. balls. And Carlos Alcaraz, he loves to stay on that baseline. He loves to play first strike tennis. So he's going to need to put Berrettini on the move and not let him get settled in to be able to hit big forehands. right there is going to be a key for Alcaraz. I think you know, it's always been a pattern against Berrettini. If you can run him into the forehand and then attack that backhand side, because on the backhand, sometimes he looks to chip the lob or even chip passing shots. So Alcaraz loves to come to the net. He's definitely one of those Spanish players that likes to come forward, be aggressive. So that'll be a great play for him. Berrettini trying to get the, the big hit into play there. Just going long, so Alcaraz, no sign of any nerves early on, gets the lead, one love. And as I say, we're joined courtside by Mark Pecci. Mark, how's the, how are the conditions there courtside, and, and what are you looking for in this matchup? Hey, Colin. Um, hey, Nick. It's it's warm. Let me tell you that. Number one, it is extremely hot down here. So if it gets physical, it's going to be interesting to see how both of them cope. I don't really have too many worries in that department. I know that we're always seduced by the speed and the brutality of both these players' forehands. But if I'm being honest, I think the biggest difference today and the, the, will be the backhands. I, I feel as though Akaras's backhand is way more solid, and I kind of feel as though that's going to get him out of more problems. Going to be able to return more effectively off that shot as well, which I think would just edge at the start of this match to me believing the Spaniard can win this. Yeah, it's great to have you with us, Petch. And, uh, Hello, 15. Can we just get an update on how many layers of sun cream you've got on there courtside? <laughs> I tell you what, Colin, if you want to know what a ghost looks like with sunburn, come down to me in a couple of hours. It's amazing pitch. That's exactly what you were talking about right there with the backhand of Alcaraz. Yeah, there were two serves to the backhand. He was able to get the return deep in the court. So then he was able to stay aggressive on that next ball. Very solid off that backhand wing is Alcaraz. Berrettini, he's going to be using a lot of slices off that backhand wing just 15. to try to set up his 15. forehand. He's going to try to keep the ball low so that Alcaraz can't generate a lot of pace. 
He might even try to bring him forward just to get him off the baseline a little bit. Will Berrettini. Flies long, a miss hit from Berrettini. 15, and having won 14. the toss and put the Spaniard in to serve, there's a, a real opportunity here for Alcaraz to get off to a fast start. First serve, fending off the first break point. And another, another one here to bail himself out of trouble. And he finds it. Huge serving from Berrettini. Yes. And that's always a big play when you're having to play Berrettini. You want to get as many returns back in the court as you can because he's called the hammer for a reason. He's able to hit those spots with great pace. You don't want to give him too many free points if you can. It's going to be interesting, guys, how often Carlos goes into the forehand of Berrettini early on as well, just to try and keep him honest. I mean, beautiful fly off that slice. I agree with what you're saying, Nick. Berrettini's going to use that slice to try and set up the forehand, but Carlos gets so much work from down low that it's difficult for Berrettini to get a huge edge. His edge certainly seems to be with the first serve at this yes. stage. and. Struggling in other areas, but it's keeping him alive here. This opening service game for the Italian. right there pets that's what you were talking about using that backhand down the line going into the Berrettini forehand a lot of times when a player has such a big wing as Berrettini does on that forehand side a lot of coaches say well let's stay away from that forehand but you actually want to run him into that corner so that then you can attack his weaker side of the backhand fourth break point here for Alcaraz That's a really smart serve. I don't know how much data you've seen on second yes. serves from players on the ATP Tour, but more often than not, if you take it into the forehand of your second serve, they actually miss more returns. And the other thing, obviously, from Berrettini's perspective is that if he hits that serve, he's more than likely to get a plus one. When he hits the kicker, Alcaraz can just drag it cross court on the diagonal into the back end of the Italian. So smart serve. elongated baseline exchange and it's Berrettini who comes out on top yeah, if you don't have your popcorn ready get it out this is going to be spectacular and 
that was the first time we've really seen that dynamic of Berrettini using the slice, trying to keep Alcaraz at bay and be able to do it on that occasion. That's a big hold for Berrettini. Four break points saved. And he levels the scoreboard at one all. One game on. Did have some problems with food poisoning in his opening round match, Berrettini. You mentioned he came through that one against Brandon Nakashima in four sets, just a little over three hours. Had to make a couple of quick sprints off the court, <laughs> I think. And relied on some medication, but seemed to indicate he was clear of that after his second round win over Stefan Kozlov again in four sets. There's every reason to believe both these players are 100% ready to go for this one. Yeah, actually, after that match against Nakashima, he signed the camera, camera Emodium Grazzi. <laughs> so there was every indication he wasn't feeling great, but he looks fit out there today. Just world class. Uh, Alcaraz, he was actually only three and four record 15, against players oh. in the top 10 in 2021. But one of them, as you mentioned earlier, Colin, was against Berrettini, where he had break points in the third set to get a break. Wasn't able to do it, but just stayed the course and was able to win that match 7 6 in the third, 7 5 in the breaker. So that'll give him a lot of confidence going in that he can win this match. An interesting play there from Alcaraz, and yeah, as Nick mentions, 30, he's had 15. seven meetings with top 10 opponents in his young career. Alcaraz, he's won three, lost four, but in his last four meetings, he's won three of them, and that included a third round win over Stefano Sitsipas at the US Open. So he's been in a similar position before a third round and a slam, playing a top 10 player and got the job done. Talk about confidence as well. Akaraz won the next gen 15. ATP final in Milan just in November. Took out some of the young guns. So this guy is coming in confident. Coming in confident, coming in as the next gen champ, but it's going to be the here and now very, very soon for this man. Yeah. Goodness me, what a strike on the forehand there. And it's a confident start for Carlos Alcaraz. So let's have a look. Well, that is somewhat surprising, I would say. Matteo Berrettini, 43%. Carlos Alcaraz, 57 So they obviously think the 18-year-old Spaniard starts his favorite. with that guys 57 percent alcaraz yeah i'm a buyer of that i actually chat to J jim curry this about this match this morning and him, we both felt that alcaraz just slightly edged it in our minds yeah definitely happy with that patch i agree with you there on that backhand side alcaraz just has the the edge
stunning. Absolutely stunning from Alcaraz. Fifteen on. I mean, it's amazing how he got here and flipped this ball up so quick on the lob. See the racket head speed, and Berrettini couldn't read it because the ball got up so fast. This guy is so much fun to watch. It's incredible. He's got that thing, that X factor, whatever you want to call it. He's not the next Rafa. He's not the next Roger. He's not the next Novak. He's the one and only Carlos Alcaraz. He is special. And the amazing thing is, six foot five Italian stallion, huge game, Matteo Berrettini, and yet you can't take your eyes off Alcaraz. He's dominating this court. And once again, building some pressure on the Berrettini serve. Yeah, Petch, as you were saying, I mean, this guy's mindset is incredible. I've been able to watch him practice a lot. He doesn't waste one ball in practice. You know, sometimes maybe you just miss one in the net or whatnot, and, but every ball he's going at it 100%, and he's got a great team around him in Juan Carlos Ferrero. He trained in Alicante. Pablo Carreno Busta also trains there. Berrettini's turn for a special point. And every morning I've been seeing Alcaraz, Carreno Busta, Juan Carlos Ferrero, and the team from the academy. Just everyone's been having breakfast together. They have lunch together. They're a constant team, and they keep their they keep their circle small. There's an interesting change up there from Berrettini using the drop shot, trying to disrupt things out here. Colin, it's actually one of his favorite plays. The plus one drop shot offers serve Berrettini. He feels as though players are going to just back up and, yes. and be a long way behind their baseline. It was one of the part of his considerable success through at the US Open when he made the semis there as well. So I'd expect to see a little bit more of that, but the movement from Alcaraz to get that drop shot was incredible a couple of points ago. Yeah, he's looking for the drop shot again there, but just cut it a little fine. Once again, Alcaraz has got his teeth into a return game. Advantage, You just wonder if when he gets that block forehand return off these big serves as well, and he learns that particular shot, you know, how difficult it's going to be to hold serve against him. He's tried to drive everyone back, and obviously he's missed a number of them, which has allowed Berrettini to hang on. For the first time, Alcaraz opening the court and quick into the net. And there we see the transition yes. game from Carlos Alcaraz. He loves to come forward. He's very comfortable up there. He plays a lot of doubles with his buddy Juan Car or, uh, Carreno Busta. And you see he was able to cover the net. He was looking for that passing shot. And to the naked eye, tennis can look chaotic, but that was the pattern of play again, wasn't it? Big into the forehand, attack the backhand, and take control of the point. <laughs> A magnificent return of serve there from Alcaraz. Advantage. Stepping inside the baseline. It was 181 kilometer an hour second serve. 
And once again, for the fifth time in the match, he has a break point. Oh, the hammer dropping it out wide, 204 kilometers an yes. hour. That was a rocket from Berrettini. Just his first ace. He feels as if he's going to need many more. always a great play off a drop shot. When you move forward, most players think you're just gonna feed it back to them and let you hit a passing shot. But if you can just put it right in front of you, make your opponent come forward, then you can cover more angles. But this time it was too good for Alcaraz to get to. Once again, Berrettini battles well. And Vincenzo Santopadre, his coach, or one of his coaches, will be delighted with that hold. Yeah, they've been together ever since day one, since he started playing tennis. And also, Berrettini uses a guy by the name of Craig O'Shaughnessy. Craig works with the Italian Federation for match analytics. Definitely, you know, Berrettini's done his homework on specific patterns that Alcaraz likes to go to. Well, one area that Alcaraz maybe hasn't quite got up and running yet is the, the first serve, although that was a, a nice one, his first ace. Came into this game on 44% of first serves. 215 kilometers an hour. He missed the forehand, but it was a nice mix on the first serve there. We mentioned Alcaraz, of course, one of the up and coming stars, but very, very close to being the here and now. And one man that certainly agrees with that is Rafa Nadal. Asked whether Alcaraz has a chance of winning here. Rafa said, does he have a chance of winning here? Yes, what can I say? Why not? He's a young player. He's clearly on the up. We'll see what happens. Everything is unpredictable, but he has huge potential. And all of a sudden, after a, a quick start here, in which he generated five break points, Berrettini able to hold on and now has two of his own. Just big hitting from Carlos Alcaraz. And again, that was the perfect play coming into that Berrettini backhand. But what a sky lob Berrettini put in here. But Alcaraz was able to give himself a lot of space around that forehand. 
and 42 kilometers an hour of fire. And on the very edge of the line, clutch tennis. But on the second break point, the forehand goes long. And Matteo Berrettini, the seventh seed, is first to break in this opening set. In the early stages here of a fantastic contest between Berrettini and Alcaraz. Seventh seed, Berrettini, a break to the good, leading 3-2. just feel that break really gives him a platform to move through the gears in this match. He looked slightly on the ropes the first two or three games. Ah, it's just the start you want after getting a break. 13, nice quick left. points and ace and an unreturned serve for Matteo Berrettini. He's used to getting a lot of free points, so I'd agree with you again there, Petch. Alcaraz, it's okay just to block a few forehands into the court, get the point started. He's got him again with the lob, this time on the backhand. Yeah, and again, just look at how quick he got that ball off his racket. 30, 15. Fast racket head speed, and it was up so quick. Parentini couldn't read it. Well, one of the highest defensive lows we've seen this week. But easy pickings for Berrettini, and that's a, a strong hold off the back of the break. Four games to two. We mentioned Carlos Alcaraz sporting the, the sleeveless top, showing off the muscles. It's actually his first tournament of the season. Chose not to play prior to the Australian Open. Felt he'd finished 2021 late. It was mid-November after those next-gen finals. He then got COVID, which disrupted his preseason, and just wanted an extra week or two to really work on his scheme and his body. <laughs> Clip the net tape there, but that really gives you an insight into the discussions he would be having Love with his team. team and his coach, Juan Carlos Ferrer, very much an investment in the process. Oh, absolutely, and he was supposed to play Davis Cup as well, but ended up testing positive for COVID. So wasn't able to practice and play during that time. So again, just trying to make the right decisions based on scheduling. So for Carlos Alcaraz, I mean, if you have a coach like Juan Carlos Ferrero, someone who's been there, done that, former number one, just going to give you a lot of confidence and belief in any type of scheduling moves, training moves. So at a young age, he's got the right team around him. There is Juan Carlos Ferrero, as you said, Nick, former world number one. Best run here at the Australian Open came in 2004. All the way to the semi finals. He is a Grand Slam champion, of course, multiple.
Big second serve there, and you feel this is a big game for Alcaraz. Berrettini's starting to get to grips with this match. You talk about no fear from Carlos Alcaraz. This guy went 159 kilometers an hour down the tee. Got his opponent stretching. To go for such a big serve at 15.30. He just has pure belief in himself. First serve isn't really doing the damage so 15, far. 14. Just 5 of 11, 45% of first serve points won. Yeah, I'm not always a big believer against Berrettini, but you need to serve that big into the backhand. I mean, for someone like Carlos, actually, I think slower second, slower first into the backhand is going to elicit a slow return. That kind of serve, Petch. Yeah, I just yes. feel as though that's a good number for me. I mean, you can even drop it to 160. He doesn't know what's coming. He, you can see that Alcaraz has been up, up, up to 100. So he's got to manage something coming with between 160 and 200, and that's going to mess with your timing. And he doesn't generate huge pace off that wing. So I don't think Carlos needs to keep trying to ping it in there as hard as he has been. Well, the numbers so far would certainly support that. Alcaraz is struggling on first serve, but he's won seven from nine, 78% of second serve points. So he's going to have to take a little bit off the ball. He's, he's still trying to swing for the hills. He's making mistakes. You can see the confidence is dropping. He's looking over anxiously to Juan Carlos Ferrero. He's, he's going to have to manage himself a little bit here. A brilliant return from Berrettini deep into the backhand corner and with it he secures a double break and you would think the opening set he leads 5-2. Slider out wide, as we've seen on these fast courts, has been very effective. Just letting the court do some work for itself. Let's press up. Once again, Akaraz just getting slightly lost in the point there. Having looked so confident to start this match, he now seems to have some doubt in the way he's executing. So Matteo Berrettini putting the foot in the accelerator. And it's three set points. And the first set is indeed Matteo Berrettini's. Six games to two. A good job early on to weather the storm. Yeah, I 
And for Alcaraz again, it's any more first serves in. He's only making 58% of those first serves. It's the type of first serve as well, as you both alluded to. stats he's only used one wide serve on either side and that was to the ad side so I think just mixing in maybe a few more wide serves try to use the pace of the court to spread Berrettini out and then on his first ball he can get Berrettini on the run again we know that's when Berrettini struggles when he has to play defense especially the backhand so you want to find a way to spread the court And Mark, your court side, if you could whisper a thing or two to Alcaraz 15, right 15. now, what would it be? I think he's got to build a point. I think he's trying to go straight through Berrettini. He's trying to blast his way through him. And I think he's got a, he's got so much spin on his forehand and he can get the ball up very high to Berrettini. But to do that, he's actually got to drop a bit deeper at times and actually let the ball come to him so he can use the extra time to get the ball higher. The more he gets on the front foot, the flatter the ball he's trying to hit, and he's not able to get through Berrettini. He needs to get round him at the moment rather than straight. Well, he's unraveling here. 15, Carlos okay. Alcaraz perhaps mm -hmm. overthinking the match at the moment in his mind. What a start to the second set. This would be for the big serving Matteo Berrettini. that kick serve you were talking about, Petch. Just 14. making Berrettini have to generate pace off the backhand return. Not easy for him. Big time tennis from Matteo Berrettini. He got a look at another second serve. And that time he capitalized. The perfect start to the second set. You know, a set and a break to the good. He needs one love. Uh, Berrettini was able to find a way to get that back end return deep in the court, cross court, which then was able to set up the forehand. And when he's able to run around and give himself time on that forehand, watch out. And we've seen something similar to this from Alcaraz before. It was his 18th birthday back in May last year where he came in as a wild card to the Madrid Masters 1000. Won his first run against Manorino and then played Nadal on his 18th birthday. We see the win predictor heavily in Berrettini's favour now at 82%. And it felt like he just overthought the match on that day. It's tough for an 18-year-old to process all of that. Nadal winning one and two. Feels as if he's slightly overthinking this one so far. See, that kind of is smart, for, again, from Berrettini, as, as I said earlier in the match. When you look at a lot of the numbers, the forehand return on the second serve, there's more mistakes. It's, it's tougher to produce if he's going to go in at that pace. And then Alcaraz is scrambling to get back behind his baseline. He'd be better oh. off staying a little deeper, ripping the return, and then moving forward. 
but you can see again he's he's right up here and it's okay if it's a kick serve but if it comes in quick to the forehand it's tough to time yeah, he was asked in press after his second round win over Lajovic if he felt as comfortable on hard courts as clay courts and See, he was starting to feel more comfortable. He recognizes that a lot of the big tournaments, if not most of the big tournaments, are on hard, so he needs to be a very good hardcore player. And uh, the kind of detailed adjustments he's going to have to look to make. Yeah. 30 15. early stages of his career, Alcaraz, but he's actually won 63% of his total matches at tour level on clay, 67 on hard. So the numbers look good early on. Yeah, his mind's like a rubber ball in an elevator right now, Alcaraz. He's he's lost his rhythm, he's lost his patterns, he's hitting shots from like an inch off the ground, trying to go over the high part of the net. It's just lost it. He's 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 lost what he started the match with and he's gotta find it again soon. Berrettini has this one figured out at the moment. Berrettini leads two games to luck. And again there, Nick, I feel that Alcaraz has given him a nice target where he's standing on the first serve return for Berrettini because that body serve is equally as effective as the one down the tee and the one out wide because Alcaraz just uh, have not got time to actually get himself out of the way. Absolutely, Petch, you know, we've been talking about how fast these courts 15. are. The more time you can give yourself behind the baseline, then you can actually see the serve, and especially with the pace that it's coming. I mean, Berrettini served as fast as one, 220 kilometers an hour. You need to give yourself some space back there and also maybe change your return position every now and then. I mean, Berrettini's been hitting his spot, so I think for Alcaraz, if he can change his return position, maybe take away the tee, maybe take away the wide serve, Make Berrettini think a little bit on his service games. That can help as well. Again, Berrettini finding the heavy kick to his back kind of struggle. Chance for Alcaraz just to steady the ship here. Alcaraz breaks around the seven games against him. Yeah, you get the feeling sometimes Alcaraz, when he gets pushed far behind the baseline, he's just not as comfortable. He doesn't know that he can just shape the ball, give it some height, and then move back into the baseline. He kind of tries to red line when he's further back behind the court as well. And that was an example of a ball that just has to be going into play from Alcaraz. Solid backhand return there from Alcaraz deep in the court. Able to set up the forehand, get the short reply. See how fast 
Casey moves up to this short ball. Doesn't let, sit and let it wait on him. He gets there quickly. That's actually just the third point Alcaraz has won on return since the opening two Berrettini service games where he built so much pressure. Had the five break points across them. It's now been a, a procession of easy holds for Berrettini, who's in a nice rhythm on serve. Fourth ace of the match there. See Berrettini's girlfriend there, Maria Tomlanovic, the Australian player. She'll be feeling relaxed with the way things are going here, but I'm sure well aware of the danger Alcaraz still possesses or presents. Again, that's a ball there that he doesn't need to go for quite as much. And, and also, go into the backhand of Berrettini. That's where Berrettini doesn't like to pass off that side. He'll typically chip it. But there, he just went for too much into the forehand. one-two punch there from Alcaraz. Great footwork to get around that forehand. Amart, you just get a sense that he's he's rushing. It certainly looks as if his thinking is rushed. Yeah, for a guy that loves playing on clay, he's definitely rushing at the moment. He's trying to finish the points very quickly. Despite the beautiful shots that the best players in the world have had, the entertained us for the last 20 years there's still a real skill in getting your opponent to miss like that to putting in enough breaking balls change up pace elevation and that's why the, the top players have been so good because even on their worst days they've still had another sort of dimension to their game at the moment Carlos just wants to hit winners and very few are able to do that consistently through a grand slam draw let alone one match enough for a highlight reel or two from Alcaraz, but it's been the, the base level 14, today. 15. It hasn't been anywhere near its usual level or certainly where it's needed to be. But he looks to be stabilizing here. Chance for a second hold in a row. Game. Uh, third ace. Brings up just that. So Alcaraz sticking around in the second set here, but it's Berrettini a break to the good. 3-2. Beautiful Melbourne Park. Paddle tennis. Very popular in Carlos Alcaraz's part of the world. And he needs to paddle a few more balls back into play here. And 
you feel like that was a better point from Alcaraz? He actually gave himself a little bit of space behind that baseline, a little bit more Love shape as well. And may Berrettini have to try to fire a winner. Forehand didn't miss by much, but at least Alcaraz gave him a chance to miss it. that ability to get the ball to the Berrettini backhand. 13. Make him come up with a slice, and if it lands a little bit short, take advantage. And this game, it, it just already feels completely different with returns and balls going into play. Yeah, if you look at Berrettini's serve patterns on his first serve, he served 15 out wide, one in the body, and 18 down the center in total. So he's definitely trying to go for the corners on his first serve. Incredible athleticism and movement from Alcaraz, but ultimately to no avail. Berrettini bossing the court. 40-30. That's the challenge for Alcaraz here. You know, he's already a break behind in the second set. Yes, he can make more balls, he can return better, but he's going to need some help from Berrettini as well. The Italian lands the big first serves. It's going to be tough to break. Yeah, another big first serve there, winning 92% of his first serve points. 11 out of 12 is Berrettini in this set. His accuracy at times is unnerving. Andy played him at Queens, and we did a lot of data kind of drill down on in his serve and he's just got amazing variety there's not really a big pattern there's certain spots that he goes to that maybe three four percent he gets higher success rate but his closeness to the line with the serve is as good as anything i've ever seen i remember a match roger played here i think it was the semis against Hyun chung where he started off just with ace after ace after ace and Berrettini produced something like that against Andy at Queens in the opening set. He does take the racket out of your hand. of the Berrettini serve patch. Is that something where you think changing the return Berrettini. position, like maybe Love. taking away the wide serve, taking away the T serve, just making him see something different on the other side of the net, do you think that's a good play? Yeah, I think there's two things that Carlos can learn. is a block return, which I think is going to be crucial on the hard for him against these guys that serve big. And if I was coaching as somebody coming through at his age, I'd also teach him to be able to return from four or five meters behind the baseline. Next because that's an art in itself. I mean, you're basically hitting at a ground stroke and the footwork patterns are all different to your normal return, but I, I would make him teach, you know, to, to go and learn that, sorry. Uh, that's, that's very similar to Medvedev, correct? He's about four or five meters behind the baseline on some of those returns and he yeah. gets them all back and he just puts so much pressure on his opponent. 
but you can't just do it mid-match. You've actually yeah. got to go and spend quite a long time learning the feel of it because you've got such a long way to hit the ball back that it's it's tricky to learn. Yeah. He's figured things out on serve at least, Carlos Alcaraz, and he's still believing here. Berrettini leads four games. Yes, Berrettini. Still a set and a break to the good 4-3 second set. He's got to find a solution to breaking the Berrettini serve here in the second set. Michael Hellworth in the chair just cleaning things. I think a, a feather or something had come down on the court. There's a bomb come down on the court there. Absolutely. We've been talking about the return position from Carlos Alcaraz, which we'll take a look at. You can see there. He's just returning a meter in closer on the second serve today than he did last season. And he's getting caught up in some of those body serves. I think that's where he can move back a little bit, give himself a little bit more space. We also see him point three of a meter further in in the first serve. And that's, you know, doesn't sound like a lot, but it can be significant when you're talking. What, 0.5 of a second to return it. For the second game in a row, he's got to 31st in a Berrettini service game. And I have a chance to make something happen here. to just lose his footing there, but it didn't make a difference. Alcaraz now 15, with a, a real chance to get back into this second set. This was a forehand, Nick. Just seemed to stumble there. Thankfully, no damage done. Yeah, just pretty quick with his feet. Giving himself a couple break points here. For the first time, Berrettini 30, saving a big point with a big first serve. That's the one he makes a little more frequently on the break point down, but he still swings it out wide as well, but he just misses that one a little bit more. So if you have to guess, you'd probably guess for that one that he's just gone down the tee with. He's missed with his first serve, so Real opportunity for Alcaraz now. And he gets it. Alcaraz is back in the second set and he's back in this match. Alcaraz is Four back in business. Okay. See him looking over his camp Juan Carlos Ferrero. Ferrero on his feet, giving energy to his charge. But look at that slice, how low it stayed. Felt as if the early return actually put him behind in the point, but it was just the, the speed, the desire, the passion, wasn't it, to hang in and find a way to win the point. Yeah, Berrettini didn't drop the hammer on the forehand. He was a bit cautious, conservative, didn't want to miss. And you're absolutely right, Colin. Allowed Alcaraz to get back in the point. Well, a real twist here on the Rod Lever Arena. 
New balls in hand for Alcaraz. And it's very much game on. The sixth ace of the match for Alcaraz. Fastest serve of the day, 216 kilometers an hour down the tee. Flimbo, if we took two of your fastest serves ever, would it add up to 216? <laughs> Might have to rejig the numbers a bit. Yeah, one, two, six, and try and dig out the volley, guys. <laughs> Third double for Alcaraz. Doesn't want to get too carried away here, having got back into the second set. I just don't see how Berrettini gets out of trouble with that serve. 164, lifting like that onto his backhand. I mean, he just can't get it cross-court quick enough to get Alcaraz's his forehand out of play. So I'd love to see a bit more of that from Alcaraz. He's finding solutions out here, Carlos Alcaraz. It hasn't been the highlights of the first set, but it's been more effective. Oh, the beautiful Melbourne CBD skyline in the background. Walking distance from this magnificent Rod Laver Arena. And inside, the seventh seed, Matteo Berrettini. And all his own way for the majority of this contest, but a big swing. And he's now serving to stay in the second set. The job done on the break point with that 13. early return yeah. position, Alcaraz, but he's continuing to miss it. Yeah, it's just amazing to me. Berrettini served 42 first serves throughout this match so far, and only one has been in the body on the first. But on the second, he likes to go the majority of the serves to the body on the second. He's at seven there so far. 40 left. Whereas he's gone three wide and three center down the tee. Berrettini holds. And we're now right into the sharp end of this second set. Alia Tomlanovic, Berrettini's girlfriend. She lost in the first round here. Tough draw against Paula Badoza. One of the players in the discussion to win this tournament. She came through a tough third round today. Good win over 
cost you in three sets. Sensational from Alcaraz. I uh, just love that change of direction from Alcaraz. 13, Anytime you can take that backhand down the line into the Berrettini forehand. Again, it's so easy to kind of get locked into that backhand cross court rally. But this just gets Berrettini on the run. He loves to be in that ad corner. What great speed off that B hand. It didn't look as if he was going to get there, let alone win the point. 13, 15. Did you think he was getting to that one, Petch? Honestly, I didn't know. I didn't think he was going to get it. It was just a last minute lunge. Again, you just think Alcaraz, if it had been half a meter forward, he's cutting that off for sure. It's just court position from him. Every time you hit a drop shot, you want to get as close as you can to the net 14, and just take 15. away the angles from your opponent. As you said, Petch, you just didn't get close enough. Another strong hole for Alcaraz. And the Spanish flags are starting to fly. his best return of the match so far certainly on the first serve Alcaraz but Maritini holds him off yeah I don't know if you can notice there but he actually took a step to his left right before Berrettini hit it he could read the toss and he caught that one in the first serves unreturned department for Alcaraz in the first set unreturned 15% of them and in the second set 57% of them and he's actually achieved that by taking some pace off absolutely Not always about speed in this sport there's certainly plenty of speed on that first serve Six games all. And Berrettini has Second raced set. his way through the game, and we're into a really critical tiebreak here. So let's see what adjustments Alcaraz makes here. Again, we've talked about how well that kick serve has been working to the Berrettini backhand. First tie break of the season for Alcaraz. Second for Berrettini. He won a, a really important one in his first round match. We mentioned he was struggling physically. 
And he was able to win the third set there against Nakashima at one set all in a tie break. See out the match in four. I know what you guys think, but this feels like an important tie break for Berrettini here. I think this is an important point. I kind of feel if you're Alcaraz here, unless you go deep, which it looks like he is actually, this is good. He's moved his position. He's going to try and buy himself some time. Otherwise, I'm going to say, you've got to guess. As he said, Petsch, just by backing up as far as he did, it just gives a different visual to the server. And he was able to get the second serve he wanted, right? Berrettini missed the first serve. He got the second serve he wanted. But even on that second serve, he was just too close. These fast courts, that ball's getting in on him too quickly. of forehands there he won't be happy with him and he barely scraped the first one over the net down the line and then he didn't really hit the next one particularly cleanly and then he tried to absolutely rope the third one and at that stage his bad experience is just floating it down the line with a bit of height because he simply didn't have the rhythm at that point no great surprise the error came Timed double fault. Three one. Berrettini. His third of the set. Alcaraz fourth of the match. And it's advantage Berrettini in the tiebreak. Can you believe that shot from Matteo Berrettini? I'm going to tell you one thing, I didn't see that one coming. That was a great move into the net from Alcaraz here. He's a little deep in the court, but when, he, when you see that slice from Berrettini, you want to get in. But what a knife from the Italian. It's almost as if he decided he was so far behind in the point, he was just going to go for something special, and didn't he pull it off there? A little off the first serve there, Berrettini. But it was effective. That's the beautiful thing about this sport, isn't it? We can talk about Alcaraz backing up and giving himself some more time, but what does that look like for Berrettini? And Berrettini just looked at it and said, well, he's given me the angle. That's very nice of him. I can drop 10, 15, 20 Ks, pretty much be assured of making this serve out wide, um, and I can exploit the angle that he's now given me. So. You know, credit to the Italian, very high tennis IQ, beautiful execution. And changing hands at 5-1 here, Berrettini now just two points away from a, a really strong two-set to love lead.
and Six. falls tamely into the net from Alcaraz. Berrettini. And it brings up five set points for the seventh seed, Matteo Berrettini. Thankfully, umpire Nico Hellworth is okay here. That ball flew into his chair. Six two. Martini was just trying to hustle it back into the court. And the ball kid, the ball kid was there as well. Good reflexes just to put your head down quickly. <laughs> Second set point. Alcaraz just keeping Six, himself in three. this tiebreaker. Sean Berrettini, you can't hang that ball in the middle of the court or else I'm going to absolutely rope it. So now a third set point for Matteo Berrettini. But a first on serve. And it's the serve that Seven makes the difference for the Italian. Seven against two six. Who now moves ahead into a really commanding position in this match. Now that was impressive from Berrettini, the way he was able to deal with Alcaraz fighting back into the set. The hitting load remains high from both players. It was a, a long set, not necessarily the most physical. We're seeing Reasonably short points, but plenty of high intensity changes from Alcaraz in particular. Third set, Berrettini to serve. And so often in by best of five set tennis, there may well still be a fair way to go yet. The bad news for Carlos Alcaraz, if you want to add any more to the fact that he's two sets to love down, is that Berrettini is a very strong five-set player. He's played five matches that have gone the distance in his career, and he's won four of them. Never lost from two sets to love up. Flip side of that, Alcaraz has won all three of the five set matches he's contested, but never been down two sets to love. So this is a new hole that he's in. Well, he breaks new ground just about every time he takes to the match court, <laughs> doesn't he? And he certainly looks like the type of player with the, the physicality, the mentality, and well, the game, if he can really get it going to mount a comeback. Actually, really like that play. I think he could do a little bit more of it as well. Just trying to mix something up, just give Berrettini something to think about. Not necessarily to win the point, but just maybe to get a double full. Berrettini trying to whip it out quick into the juice side on the second. Just, just something to get Berrettini out of this beautiful rhythm. Is on on serve. Oh. 
And that's just a massive return. When he broke, he was actually massaging the ball back beautifully on the return. But you can see there he's almost adding pace. That's 205. He just needs to lay the string on the ball and just try and guide it back to the baseline if he can, just fade it into the backhand side. But he actually swings quite hard through the shot. So it's 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 tough for him to, to get a high percentage of those type of returns back. As you said, it could almost be a little bit of a shorter backswing from Alcaraz. Like you said, he was massaging it back in, getting himself into the point. Berrettini's so used to getting free points. I'd agree with you, Petch. And also, 100%, I think for Alcaraz, just needs to be a little bit more unpredictable. He's been playing the same type of tennis throughout this entire match, but you want to see him come forward even just a little bit more Let's you know, just because you chip charge in a match and you lose the couple of the points, if you get to a breaker and you get a double four, I know the data won't say that it's because you chip charge, but the reality is it probably yeah. is. Again, I'd agree with you there, Petch. It's also like on the serve and volley. You know, using the serve and volley play when you're up in the score, whether it's 30 love, 40 love, you don't have to win that every time, but it just gives your opponent something to think about. Absolutely. And the words there of Mark Petchy, courtside, and Nick Munro, who's been in the doubles draw at this year's Australian Open. <laughs> Forehands dragged wide from Alcaraz. We saw the clenched fist from Berrettini after the opening point of this game. He is sensing a chance to pounce. Love that in. Tough for me to see from where I'm sitting. Looked like he gave him a bit of the fake serve there. Looked like he almost threw the ball like he was going to hit the kicker and then just twisted his hand around the outside of the edge of the ball. Look to do similar there. And it's a nice move forward. You can see the young man thinking, using that fake kick toss and going out wide. Again, looking to move forward, putting pressure. Yeah, that's a really important hole from lock 30 for Carlos Alcaraz. Sets one and two, Alcaraz fell a break behind relatively early. It's important he at least stays on serve. 
to the, the business end of this set. He's back up on the baseline trying to fend off the, the first serve of Berrettini. One hand back end pickup, but Alcaraz was got up there quickly, found the angle. And we keep talking about this first serve of Berrettini. And he's winning 83% of those first serve points won. So if you're Alcaraz, you've got to find a way to get that return back in play, change your position, show something different. Juan Carlos Ferreira and I'm watching this match. I, honestly, I think I'd pick up the phone to Ivo Karlovic and just see if he's around for a couple of weeks to come and practice his serve against um, Carlos and just t teach him to be able to hit a good block back. And it's tough to find people that serve as big as Berrettini. I mean, even if you move into inside the baseline and, and try and serve, it's a different angle. I would literally get a big server to come and then just literally drill him to, so that he feels comfortable blocking a ball back. a ladder in the midcourt and send a few down. How much you pay an Ivo Karlovic to show up to do that practice for the young man? Honestly, I pay, pay a lot. I mean, I'd literally yep. pay, yep. I don't know, that would be in the tens of thousands because if he learns a chip return, it's he's going to win, win multiple hardcourt slams. Yep. Well, that tells a story. 25-18 for Berrettini and pressure points one. <laughs> One of them with the big first serve, and he comes through another service hold here. The Chinese philosopher Confucius once very, very wisely said there are three methods to learn wisdom. Reflection, which is the noblest. Imitation, which is the easiest. And experience, which is the bitterest. And that's what Carlos, at this stage of his career, like so many who are touted for the top, have to go through. It's just part of the process. Some do it faster than others, and I'm sure he'll do it very swiftly. Carlos Alcaraz certainly building his experience here on Rod Lever Arena, serving at 1 2. Ah. And also when players see a guy like Medvedev standing so far back and it winning points and winning matches for him, you would think more players would practice that type of return. Especially in moments like this, you probably need it. Alcaraz, great one-two punch, big first serve, and that forehand that can be lethal. We see him really staying down through his forehand more now. In the first set, he was pulling up off of it, shanking a lot. And now he's bringing his athleticism. to hear the call there but the volley well wide in the end from Berrettini. The good news for Alcaraz is that the points are, are short here. Two sets have been played but you can see there just an hour and 46 minutes on the clock so despite the fact that it's a warm day I mean he's got many more hours left in him here. Physicality isn't something he needs to worry about. Please. 
two games on. Question with regards to him managing a comeback is whether he's got enough game to turn this one around. New balls it's... coming into play, new rackets. Sorry, Colin, I don't think that's in question personally. He's got, he's certainly got enough game. It's a question whether he can put the game together mid-match to be able to figure out. I mean, he works so hard. He's incredibly fit, flexible. And then if you ask yourself, looking at this after an hour and 47, has he used that part of his game effectively his, enough? His feet, his movement, his ability to defend. And you could probably argue that he hasn't. You know, if you're going to put the hard yards in, you might as well use them in a match like this as well, where you can't just go through your opponent as he's been trying to. Yeah, that's when we talk about game. It's not just hitting the ball. It's the right shots at the right times, getting the tactics spot on. Berrettini got it spot on there. What a precise front foot point from the Italian. Yeah, that's 9 of 13 net points Eight one from Berrettini. Again, he just hits the ball so big. He's able to push his opponent so far behind the baseline. You saw Alker has behind the Melbourne sign. Easy to come forward and knock it off. Well, probably for the first time, starting to see the frustration rising to the surface for Alcaraz. There's no doubt this match isn't playing out the way he would have wanted it to. Not just in terms of the scoreline, but the manner of his performance. Berrettini's been good, but he hasn't been that good. First serve return back in play. Give yourself a 15. chance. 15. Again, he's got so much firepower. You just want to get that return in the court and then go to work. And not just firepower, he's got the speed, doesn't he, as well? The wheels to yeah. start a point slightly behind and recover the position. Berrettini rocks back. And delivers a really telling first serve. Very difficult match. Many people, including us, give Alcaraz has a real chance of winning this one. It's been Berrettini so far. Please take your seats, ladies and gentlemen.
It's a lovely length, isn't it? Three-quarter length, dissecting the singles line. And I don't think he's done enough of that with his forehand. If you actually look at where he's missed, most of them been over the baseline of Berrettini. Hasn't gone round the angle as much as I think he could have done today. You're right. I think it's hard to kind of find that oh, angle not. sometimes because Berrettini is hitting the ball so hard. So you're just having to play a little bit of defense and keep your targets closer into the center of the court. But if you get the right ball that has a little bit less pace, then you can find that angle. Yeah. Yeah. Strong rules for Thomas Alcaraz. We saw Vincenzo Santo Padre. As we see, Juan Carlos Ferreira there, Alcaraz's coach. Santa Padre didn't quite crack the world's top 100 as a player, 103. But very successful career to get to that ranking and a real astute tennis mind. He is living and breathing every moment of this match. So Alcaraz read that serve right there. He moved over a step even before Berrettini hit it. So he's starting to get a beat on the toss from Berrettini. Ah. Interestingly, in the stats, that serve takes Matteo Berrettini to 41% of unreturned serves for the match. Alcaraz is also strong in that department at 40% himself. But it feels as if that's impacted Alcaraz's mind more. Yeah, I agree with you. It just kind of feels like Alcaraz feels like he hasn't been able to get into a rhythm of getting into these points. The service game has been over pretty quick, it feels like, from Berrettini's side. Back into play. 40 hitting. I think the sheer unexpectedness of the ball coming back into play just caught Berrettini out. Berrettini finds the baseline, though, to close out the game. Berrettini, Berrettini leads four to three. move ever closer to the fourth round. He leads 4-3, third set. New facilities all around the ground. And we are inside this magnificent Rod Laver Arena. on that for him. Oh, Berrettini gave a little bit of extra shape and just got it out of the strike zone of Alcaraz and Alcaraz just didn't get his footwork quite right to hit that forehand. Looking unforced errors on the forehand, and Alcaraz is in a hole here. Oh. 
Sejin Dari. Made the move before the server was hit there, Berrettini, but not quite able to execute. He sure did. He made that move early. He was trying to get those break points up 30-15 in this game was Berrettini. And what a strike he hit there. Just missed. He's at it again, Berrettini. 14, 13. Yeah, that's what we discussed with Petra earlier. I mean, you still like that move from Berrettini on second serves, looking to run around, because even if you miss it, it's just going to make Alcaraz think a little bit more on some of those seconds and not be able to put him in, middle, in the middle of the box. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he crushed the first one from the outside and he missed it by you know, a millimeter. So, yeah, I, I like the move. Interesting to see if he goes for it for a third time. Oh. 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 He stayed at home, Berrettini. Well, Alcaraz is staying around in this third set. controlled forehand in behind the big man plenty of margin big couple of points coming up here for Alcaraz if he can get the ball back into play there'll be a little bit of disappointment just swirling within Berrettini right now that he wasn't able to get the break Better second serve return from Alcaraz, getting around that one and finding his forehand the entire point here. Uh. He never looked like missing there. It's something to build on for the Spaniard. and Alcaraz has got both of them. Is he benefiting from the fact that Berrettini's dropped his, you know, opening you know, first serve on both of those points and he's had a look at the second, but that's partly due, I think, to the disappointment. He knew how close he was to winning the match and just lost a little bit of focus and a chance. Twice already in this set, Berrettini, but for the first time, Alcaraz converts that into Love 40. And 
And all of a sudden here, three crucial break points. If I'm Alcaraz here, I'm going to give him the one out wide. I'm going to let him, if I'm going to stay up, which he is, I'm going to give him the one out wide. He hits it, it makes it too good, but I'm going to at least get a good hit if the one comes down the tee. he's ever played but it may well be the most important he's played in the context of this match the temperature is rising in this third round and then singles and after two hours and seven minutes 18 year old Carlos Alcaraz is serving to take us to a fourth set percent of those points seven of nine when he's come into the net and the majority of those winning points have been coming into that backhand side of Berrettini I think it also looks as though he's got a little more spin on the forehand it looks as though he's gone for a little bit more elevation over yep. the net and just a little more height rather than just pure pace and it's worked out nicely for him it's a different bounce that Berrettini's having to deal with clearance from Alcaraz throughout this match. The forehand, 73 centimeters, and the backhand, 68 centimeters, so more than Berrettini. And as you said, that net clearance is helping him keep the ball in court, extend the rally a little bit longer, and also get it up a little bit higher to that Berrettini backhand. Improvements off the ground from Alcaraz. But he'd be grateful for an unreturned serve there. Now just two points away in this crucial game. And it's one step forward, one step back. And these are the moments where great champions deliver the goods. Carlos Alcaraz definitely touted to be one of those. And it's time for him to deliver here. that he brings up the first set point. <laughs> and we 
continued. Carlos Alcaraz, the 18-year-old, showing the fighting spirit that he has. I'll look back at some of the highlights from that fascinating third set. Is Alcaraz able to just grow into the set and into the match? Some adjusted adjustments to the tactics, some heavier serving, some more flight on the ground strokes. And what a match we could have on our hands now. Matteo Berrettini has returned to the court in a fresh outfit. And he's ready to get us underway in set number four. Oh, hey. He's quick to jump on the tee serve there. gun showing 102 kilometers but I think it's malfunctioned as a bigger serve throw back to your career Colin gets the upper hand in these points early on in this four set. Shows that little bit of extra energy, that little bit of extra fight. I tell you what I'm always impressed with with Matteo is his start to set. He got a lot of energy early on. You know, a lot of players, when they have a tight set or a loser set, there can be a bit of a flat spot at the start. It doesn't often seem to me that he loses his serve early in a set. I might be wrong but he, he's come out here in the same way that he did at the third, even though he was two sets to love up with really good intensity. That's probably one of the reasons why he's becoming such a, a formidable Grand Slam player. If you look at his career record, Matteo Berrettini on tour, he wins somewhere around 64% of his matches, but at this level, he's at 71. Wimbledon finalist last year, US Open semi-finalist 2019. In fact, the only slam where he's not made the quarters is here in Melbourne. So it doesn't feel like long before he does that. If it's not this year, it'll be soon. and had problem for him last year as well, wasn't it? It wasn't his tennis that was the problem. And that's a, a strong start, shaking off the disappointment of losing the third. And then number seven seed is back up and running. Yeah, as Mark says, Berrettini forced to withdraw from the tournament. He was playing fantastic tennis at the start of 2021. Solid performances in the ATP Cup, looking good through to the round of 16 where he was due to face Stefano sits a pass but forced to retire. It's an injury that's just been a problem for him throughout his career. He was blighted by it at the ATP finals right at the end of last season. Such a shame for him having qualified for the inaugural staging of that event in Turin, his home country. In fact, Alcaraz was asked in press after his second round win what his goals are for this year. And he listed two. Qualifying for the ATP finals was one of them, and top 15 in the world was the other. 
don't know about you guys, but they certainly feel within his grasp. Top 15 is within his grasp. He's at a live ranking right now of 29. So he's already gone up a couple spots by being in this third round here. Just a little tricky out there on the forehand side for Alcaraz. And obviously Berrettini's backhand with the shade just drifting across. He lost the ball in the shade there. Yeah, it can be difficult when the shadows start to move across these big arenas. And as you look at the court, the shadow coming in from the right. The bad news for Mark is that he's sitting on the left side of the court, <laughs> still getting some significant UV rays. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm starting to look like Matteo, but we all know that's a lie. <laughs> starting to look like me. From Berrettini. Yeah, you talk about spreading the court right there. Berrettini had Alcaraz on a string, didn't let him off, recognized it. This chip there from Alcaraz came forward and finished. Especially when you consider what we just discussed that the ball coming in and out of the, the shadow and sun several times in that point, but the intensity of the focus from these players, quite incredible. To move forward by Alcaraz once again. 14, yeah, he's winning 73% of those points when he's coming forward, 16 to 22. Feels very comfortable up there, keeps his rack, keep the racket out in front. Are proving awkward for Berrettini. Alcaraz levels is up at one game all, four set. I have to say, it's uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a fan of tennis, it's so great that Alcaraz has been able to stabilize in this match and, and win the third set. He feels as if we're now getting the match we expected. Take a look at Berrettini's first serve placement throughout this match. Love the team. It's been interesting. He's been going for the corners on pretty much every first serve. No real body serves, getting Alcaraz stretched, trying to get the short reply.
Sakura is really starting to get a read on the Berrettini serve, you feel. 15-13. Yeah, it's a low toss that Berrettini has. So you really got to catch that toss quickly if you're the returner. Try to pick it up. How much weight would you put on the toss? How much weight would you put on you know, patterns that have gone before in the match and, and, and other elements when it comes to trying to get a read? Yeah, no, absolutely. You want to look for specific patterns. I mean, you know, Pet, you were talking about how he likes this T serve on the do side, and you pretty much kind of give him the wide one. And I think Hucker has started to realize that. Same token, if I'm Berrettini, I mean, you're getting a lot of errors off of that forehand wing from Alcaraz. As, as we discussed, he's not willing to chip it. He's going pretty big off of that wing. So on big points, maybe it's not a bad play to serve to the forehand and let him just take a swing and see what happens. Again, New and third, excuse me, the fourth set kicking off as tight as the previous one. That's Berrettini with his nose in front, 2-1. Guys, that was a bit of a costly game for Alcaraz. He's got the wind slightly behind him there. He doesn't actually have to hit the ball as hard, and it's tougher for Berrettini off the ground to have really got the ball through there. Those two errors that he made, the forehand out of the forehand corner and the cross-court backhand, could prove to be quite costly here if Berrettini can make some quality returns. An ugly volley from Berrettini. You have to wonder if the shadow Did played a factor. Know. He's actually actually won a fair percentage of his net points at 69%, 11 out of 16. But that back end volley is not easy when it's above your head like that. See, so you just chop down too too quickly. Certainly took a glance up to the sun. Berrettini is a, a better volleyer than he showed there. Yeah, he plays quite a bit of doubles. Played with center at the ATP Cup. He's played a lot with Bolelli as well. Doesn't mind getting on the doubles court as Benteo Berrettini. Yeah, it's one of the first signs of kind of serious negative emotion looking over to his camp from Berrettini. Felt as if he had the control of the point there on the forehand, let it get away from him. And that forehand from Alcaraz has got away from him as well. What a rip. And that forehand, 141 kilometers an hour. That thing was moving. It's far from flat as well, isn't it? Loaded with spin and trajectory. Yeah. 
Looks like an easy hold in terms of the score now, doesn't it? But as you say, that missed first volley, the little chip back and down the line, those are the points that make your afternoon a little bit quicker and a little bit easier if you take them at those moments. to building here for Alcaraz. Well, that was a timely pass. He was pinned in his backhand corner there, Berrettini. T 214 kilometers an hour. That's an absolute bomb. Yeah, Nick, it wasn't just the pace, the bounce. I mean, he was almost playing that over his head. I mean, that, it was deep in the box, 214, and the thing was still get climbing when it got to him. corner again there Berrettini but couldn't find a way out this time you. and see just those stutter steps there from Alcaraz made Berrettini think he was coming in and he felt pressure on that thought he had to hit a passing shot and just put it in the bottom of the net Space was there, it was a good second serve. Emeritini blinks on the forehand. And it's the first break point of this fourth set going the way of Alcaraz. Potentially on our way to a fifth set here. Alcaraz breaks and leads 3-2.
classic case there of giving your opponent nothing, no, no pace on the ball. If you did that well, it would have been an easy choice for Berrettini. He would have hit a backhand, he would have had enough pace to use and just drive it back. But suddenly it was so soft and dying on him and he had some indecision about whether to play it on the forehand to generate greater pace and ends up missing it. doubt there is no conviction for Carlos Alcaraz he is firmly believing once more that he can win this match Just the shade. Give it another five, ten minutes, and that won't be a problem, but he lost it. Yeah, we're just a, a few minutes short of 6 p.m. local time. Very, very soon, the sun will have moved right across this Rod Laver Arena. So the sunlight might not have long left on World Lever Arena, but Carlos Alcaraz looks as if he does. Having broken for 3-2, he holds for 4-2. And edging ever closer to a fifth set. Served very well this afternoon, Matteo Berrettini. He's currently at 73% of first serves for the match. His average on tour last season on a hard court was 64%, but crucially, couldn't find the first serve from 30 all at 2 all. He went on to be broken. Please. Berrettini is kind of feeling like he had his chance late in that third set and letting it slip away. He's got to get back to the moment, focus on his game plan, not think about the score. Well, Berrettini a real drop off in his level here. Possibly still suffering from the disappointment of losing the third set. Alcaraz now with three break points for the double break. at 3-2, it definitely looks like one at 5-2, Alcaraz for set. I mean, Alcaraz is flying out here, but he's putting the building blocks in place. We're doing it for the first time here, serving for the fourth set, 5-2.
pitch. It definitely looks as if Alcaraz has upped his game, but Berrettini's gone flat. Yeah, he's definitely gone a little flat. He's disappointed, but I've got to say, I think Carlos has just looked so secure in the last sort of hour or so. Feel as though he's not hitting the ball as hard. He's making the right choices. He's not feeding pace into Berrettini. There's so many things that I think he's learned as this match has gone on that he'll, he'll suddenly understand that just taking control of it all the time isn't necessarily the right way. It's a simple philosophy, and I think it really helps him in some of the big moments that he wants to dictate, you know, the outcome of the point, and he's talked about that openly, but there is another way at times against the very best, and Berrettini is one of the very best. So good to see an 18 year old in so Alcaraz just problem solving out there. You know, again, he was redlining early on in the match. And as you said, Petch, just changing the spin, speed a little bit more now. Just so smart to keep problem solving. struggle with the kicker you have to think the remains of the sun and shadow on Rodley Marina affected him there but regardless two set points for Alcaraz to take us to a decider with set number three. The four set highlights are gonna be mainly about this man, Carlos Alcaraz. Strict diet of heavy serves and heavy hitting. has proved too much for Berrettini. Berrettini has left the court. And there's no doubt he's gonna have to raise his level in this fifth set is to come through this match. Berrettini is back on court and I think it's a really pertinent point, Mark. And I would add to that the reminder that Alcaraz elongated the preseason as much as he could to get as much physical work done. He is as strong as anyone in the draw. So here we go. Third round men singles, Berrettini Alcaraz. And it's fifth set time. And this is a, a huge set. Obviously it will decide this match, but I think that potentially the context of this tournament we're in the top quarter of the draw here, of course. That quarter missing the top seed, Novak Djokovic. So, in my mind, the winner of this match becomes favorite for a place in the semi-finals. Yeah, absolutely, and it'd be an interesting matchup if Alcaraz were to come through this, because he would potentially play Karina Busta, who is up two sets to love on Sebastian Korda at the moment. And, they both train at the Juan Carlos Ferrero Academy in Alicante. Yeah. 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 
it says they're out on court three. The other two players in this quarter, Kecmanovic and Monfils, they're through to the fourth round to face off. And Caratini trying to shorten the point here. Spin forehand speed of Alcaraz set one and two at 129, three and four at 121. And again, he's just finding more shape on that forehand, able to keep a few more balls in play. He was redlining too much early on in the match. Yes, sir. And that extra shape has just allowed him to extend the rallies, find his way into the net, be the aggressor. Two timely first serves from Aratini. Having lost sets three and four, you feel the beginnings of this fifth set so important that he gets going again. And get going, he does. A really athletic point. Berrettini moves ahead, one love. Yeah. That's obviously an important hole for Berrettini. You just felt like all the momentum has been with Alcaraz, and the coaches of Berrettini. They're up and cheering their charge on, but Alcaraz definitely has all the positive energy, the big forehands, you know, and Berrettini just needs to give those fist pumps, gives those alleys, show him that he's out there ready to compete. And we saw Santa Padre there, and other than energy, fist pumps, we talked a lot about the adjustments Alcaraz has made. What can Berrettini do to negate, you know, the more balls in play from Alcaraz, the a heavier shot shape. Are there any game adjustments he can make to turn this around? 59. Yeah, I think for Berrettini, it's still going to be, he loves to play first strike tennis. He's never really going to play defensive. He needs to stay on his front foot. And that's how he's gotten to number seven in the world. Look for his forehand, put Alcaraz in the corner, and attack. That'll get him going again. And also for Berrettini, I mean, he's winning 77% of his first serve points won, but only 39% of the second serve points won. And a lot of those second serve points he's serving into the body. But Alcaraz is starting to get a beat on that return, giving himself more space. So I think on the second serve, he can start mixing up the locations just a little bit more to catch Alcaraz off balance. that first serve. He's got to be a little careful here. He doesn't throw in too many seconds. Oh, no. Well, let's just hope that Berrettini is okay here. It was a heavy fall. He does wear ankle supports, and it looks as if he's going over the right ankle here. been 
so unlucky with injuries in his career. We mentioned he was unable to take to the court in the round of 16 last year. And there's the, the right toe just catching on the court. Over he went. He's a big man, six foot five, but he's up on his feet now. That doesn't look good in the slow mo, which they're showing on the big screen in this arena, and hence the. The crowd noises, he's up on his feet, that's a good sign for me. It looks as if he's going to call for the trainer. Honestly, I, I think that could have been a lot worse. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm hoping for, obviously. I'm feeling optimistic about it, looking at the replay up there. It, I think it could have actually been worse for him, and just the fact that he's got up and he's walked, putting as much pressure on that ankle as he just did, I think is an encouraging sign. But I think, obviously, that you're your first instinct is be incredibly scared that you, that's ended your Ladies Australian Open. Has been to the court. Yeah, and I think it's great, great what he's doing here. Obviously, just take a little bit of time. No need to try to rush back on the court, especially if you're feeling a little bit of pain. You have that ability to take an injury timeout, regroup. Yeah, it's not just the, the physical pain you feel, it's the mental fright you get in that yeah. moment. Absolutely. You know, a player that as we said, round of 16, couldn't take to the court here last year, had to retire on court in the ATP Finals to finish his 2021 season. Let's just hope it isn't going to have too big an impact on this match. Alcaraz was very quick to go around and check he's okay. You know, guys, I don't know if we can hear the physio. I'm not sure we can, can we? quite pick up the audio well enough especially not with the mask yeah and obviously one thing about ankles that anyone's played this game and has twisted it after a while your ligament gets so stretched that it just doesn't go back to the kind of tautness that it needs to to give you the stability which is why you see these players wearing ankle braces as well i was going to say actually just going back to the very first point of the set we always talk about big points in matches and so many times our eyes are sort of drawn towards break points and game points and, and those things. I actually thought the first point of the final set where Carlos missed the forehand long off a, a reasonable slice from Mateo was a, was just a big point. You know, he could have got himself up, love 15, stay in the rally, was an unnecessary error. He actually ended up benefiting from a missed forehand from Mateo on the next point. Suddenly you're at love 30. It's, it's not always the break points and the game points that, that are important, they obviously are the ones that ultimately decide it, but that first point was a was a pretty big one for him. Yeah, without doubt, and these are big moments here. Good to see the shoe going back on. So it suggests he's gonna be continuing. working with one of our ATP trainers, Saip, it's from Copenhagen. So the assessment is over, the discussion is complete. The laces are tied and we are ready to go again. That is, first and foremost, fantastic news Time. from Matteo Berrettini and for the context of this contest the last thing we would want would be for it to be decided by an injury so a few minutes since the, the last point and since that fall Alcaraz serving off 1 30 15 14 15 Probably a good thing for Berrettini just to have a point or two on return here before he has to serve again.
goodness me. It's all happening now. And you see Berrettini saying he was sorry there. He definitely didn't try to hit him. He's just in an awkward position with his swinging backhand volley, and you don't want to miss it, so you just kind of go through the middle of the court, and Alcaraz just happened to be right there. Oh, he certainly went right at him. He definitely tried to hit him. <laughs> I don't think he was trying to do him any harm, but no, I he think he certainly went didn't, body line. Didn't want to miss it. Alcaraz went down hard. Beautiful for Mark Caraz off the back of a point that could potentially have shaken him up. Just keeps his composure and navigates his way through a hold of serve. And good to see Berrettini moving reasonably well to that wide backhand. Doesn't look like the fall from the Italian is gonna decide this match. to play right there on top of the baseline, taking control, as we'll see here. The percentage of shots that he's taken inside the baseline. Right, right here, he's moving forward, pushing its opponent back. Just right here, we look at set one, shots taken inside the baseline, 31%, set two, 24%, and only 14% sets three and four taken inside the baseline for Berrettini. And that's how he likes to play. He wants to be on his front foot, and he hasn't been able to do that in sets three and four. He needs to get back to first strike tennis, taking control of the point. He's not really the type of player that likes to be on defense, so he needs to get back on offense. that Alcaraz is putting on Berrettini. I mean, Alcaraz is making 100% of his second serve returns made, whereas Berrettini is only making 69% of second serve returns made in these last two sets. So again, just putting more balls back in the court, making Berrettini have to work, and that's creating more errors off the Berrettini racket. And the pressure grows as 30 love becomes 30 all. Another clutch first serve from Berrettini. The type of which we saw so often in the first two sets. Yes. 
great example of that off-pace ball that he's been using in sets three and four, Nick, as you've been showing there. Just nothing on it, really. It's all up to Berrettini to have to make the adjustment with his feet because the ball's not coming on to him, getting up a little higher. height on that inside out forehand right there deep in the court and then I was able to set up the flat gunshot as you said Colin 148 kilometers an hour that thing was a laser first break point the fifth set But Berrettini in particular, yes. he was under real pressure on the baseline. Absolutely. I mean, Alcaraz had Berrettini pushed back behind the baseline, not in a position Berrettini wanted to be. He was playing defense. Alcaraz was on the offense. Just missed a ball that he would love to have back in Alcaraz. Second serve, just 143 yes. kilometers an hour. And Alcaraz goes long with the backhand. A similar feel to the, the very beginning of the match where Alcaraz was knocking on the door early on and Berrettini working hard to resist. yet Berrettini yeah he's just struggling to win these second serve points only winning 39 percent of them and he's struggling to make first serves as well isn't he he was or still is above 70 percent for the match but 56 in this set when he's been able to take him out wide on the forehand and then have him on a string and use his forehand moving Alcaraz non-stop. Gives himself another game point. And this time he does come through the game. How significant could that hold a serve be for Matteo Berrettini? He leads 2-1, fifth set. A crucial hold of serve from Matteo Berrettini. A hold of serve carved in steel. He was under significant pressure. Uh, he's keeping his chances alive here. Alcaraz to serve 1-2, fifth set.
15. Feels as if, and there certainly is a lot more on the line now than there was in the opening set. But again, the comparisons to the hold we've just seen from Berrettini seeing off the break point and then able to make hay off the back of it. Yeah, right now, this game is so important for Alcaraz. You want to see how he reacts to having those chances to break Berrettini. Is he able to move forward? Mickey highlighted the fact that Berrettini's played a lot more tennis in sets three and four behind the baseline, and he was just looking over to his camp there, just indicating that as well. He got caught on the second point in this game, well deep, taking the ball while it was dropping. And But it's, it's, it's kind of tough to change from where he was in sets one and two to suddenly recognise that he's got to get back there. sense that he's still playing the Alcaraz from sets one and two that was just you know hitting the ball with such blistering pace and he hasn't quite made the adjustment to Alcaraz hitting the ball a little softer He moved very deep in the court there, Berrettini. Whether it caught Alcaraz's eye or not, 14. we can't be sure. It certainly brought up a double fault. Absolutely, that's one thing we've been talking about for Alcaraz. Change your return position a little bit, and Berrettini did that exact thing and got the double fault. And having saved a break point, Matteo Berrettini in the previous game, he now has one of his own. agree with you there as far as Alcaraz yes. just taking a little bit of pace off the ball and making Berrettini work a little bit more you would think that Berrettini would be able to step up in the court and try to do something with some of those but he's just getting his feet a little bit tangled and not recognizing those softer balls tennis from a big time player I mean these guys are blistering forehands out here you can just hear how hard they're working with their footwork you can hear them breathing grunting with the inside in the right ball there Nick maybe a little too early to go for that one either way it's a chance for Alcaraz to get out of this game Stunning the way he stepped up in the big moments there. Two games on. Yeah, we've seen time and time again that backhand down the line working so successfully for Carlos Alcaraz. Again, just making Berrettini have to run into that forehand corner, and especially he's just pushing him so far behind the baseline. And Berrettini's not used to being behind the Melbourne side, and that was just a great play from Alcaraz. 
Quick question to you guys. Since Berrettini missed the two forehands that he ran around in the third set when he was up 4-3, looking for the break at 15-30, hasn't done it once. Why? Because he didn't actually make the return. So he doesn't actually know if it was the right thing to do. But the fact that he missed two has completely deterred him from doing it again. A great point there from Petschi courtside. Yeah, you're right there, Petsch. I mean, I, I think that's the aggressive play, and I think that was the right play from Berrettini, even though he missed two. Again, I mean, he hits that forehand so big, and he's able to get around it. He's a great athlete, so he's got to keep doing it and make Alcaraz know he can't put that second serve in the middle of the box. see there just how potent the Berrettini forehand can be and he's got a, a face card in his hand and he hasn't necessarily been using it in the game on the second serve return and in a match like this that will be decided by such small margins you have to use everything at your disposal you know what I was saying about his lost pace scratch that We're looking at some of the percentages here. Yeah. Berrettini's hit points, 73% are behind the baseline and only 27% inside the baseline. And that's definitely where he would like to be is inside that baseline if he can be directing traffic, Berrettini. He's not able to get there quite enough so far in this fifth set. being 73% behind the baseline, whereas Alcaraz is 48% behind the baseline and 52% inside the baseline on his forehand hit points in this set number five. So again, he's the aggressor, Alcaraz, he's taking it to Berrettini at the moment. Although Berrettini still has two game points here. Missile passed him on the previous second serve. You just wonder if that was on his mind. slice of luck off the net but the way he was able to finish the point so impressive yes. I mean, Carlos Alcaraz is everywhere around this court tonight Sets. Berrettini was getting so many free points. But in the fourth set, 
Alcaraz was making 100% of his returns in the fourth set. And here in this fifth set, he's making 76% of returns made as Alcaraz. So he's putting more balls back in play. And that's off the first and the second. He was certainly trying to make it happen there. Chance for Berrettini to get out of a tough game. Yeah. 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 Delighted to see that first serve go past the Spaniard. There haven't been many of them in sets three and four and five. It's 3-2 to, to the good here in the deciding set. It's crunch time on Rod Laver Arena. We're locked in a fifth set here between Carlos Alcaraz and Matteo Berrettini. Three very tough holes of serve in a row for these two men. And it's Alcaraz's turn to navigate his way through a hold of serve. He's serving 2-3. of the match for Carlos Alcaraz. They've shut the roof here. 13, 13. But they've shut half of it, as you can see from this picture. Look, I guess they're just trying to keep whatever sunlight they felt was still coming across the court. But I can assure you, I've been in full shade now for a good 10, 15 minutes. But it can't be that easy for Alcaraz just to suddenly have to look up and see the roof half shut. players to cope with 15, 15. three and a half hours they've been on the court we've had beautiful bright sunshine we've had partial shadow and we're now a partially closed roof what about the rest of the conditions pitch you know we're into the evening now is it cooled down is it affecting things It's, it's dropped a good four degrees, I think, since the sun's gone down sitting here. It's very comfortable. I, uh, I'm just running the Geiger counter over me just to see what sort of radiation is <laughs> coming off my skin at the moment. But uh, hopefully that will cool down as well. So I'm not complaining about the roof. It's just unusual. here tricky moments yes. yeah, similar to previous game on the Berrettini serve peg back to juice the interest of the returner just peaks nothing but positivity coming from Ferrero
Well, he's chosen to go back a couple of times on the return in this game. Yeah, and we saw Berrettini run around the forehand. That's what we have been talking about. Just didn't get around it fast enough. Was able to pop up, and Alcaraz was able to get ahead in the point. getting around for the yes. forehand. Would you rather see him up on the baseline looking to do it? No, it's okay if he's moved back. I mean, we talked about the speed of the court. You don't want to be too close because then maybe you aren't able to get around it quick enough. So you can be, you can be a little bit further back, but then you just want to give it a good hit. Oh yeah, Tom Malovic looking on nervously. see there he kind of got caught with the body serve a slice of the serve coming into the body and just not giving himself enough space Two men continue to lock horns. It's the fourth juice game in a row. You know, Karaz not out of it yet. <laughs> ah, that's a good one two punch, out wide serve. And again, when he has that forehand in the middle of the court, he can take it either yeah, direction. That return just came a little bit too short from Berrettini. Wasn't able to get a good hit on it. Alcaraz taking full advantage. And there is the hold for Carlos Alcaraz. Equally as tough as the previous one from Berrettini. And neither player giving an inch here. Yeah, you talk about two Warriors, three hours and 33 minutes in. These guys are giving everything they have out there. Neither one of them looks extremely fatigued. Both in great shape. Trying to force the issue there, Alcaraz. He didn't really need to, did he? I mean, Nick, you've been showing what he's been doing in sets three and four, not missing second serve returns, and finding the back end of Berrettini, that was a risk you didn't feel he needed to take at three all, having just got through a very tough service game.
right, Patrick? I mean, we were talking about how on the fourth set, he made 100% of his returns. That's on the first and the second serve. And so that was just putting extra pressure on Berrettini. As we saw, Akras won that four set, 6-4. And just putting the ball back in court doesn't need to go for quite as much on some of these returns that he's doing now. that Berrettini's trying to look for that Alcaraz forehand on big points, looking to serve there because he knows Alcaraz has taken bigger swings. so important in this fifth set. We've had four really tough juice games in a row. What Berrettini would give to get out of this service game right here. Berrettini prevails. Huge hit from Berrettini on the forehand. Alcaraz is down but not out. Forehand coming in at 139 kilometers an hour from Berrettini. An absolute laser. Look at the athleticism from Alcaraz in his effort to get there. Goodness me. Flexibility. Almost did the splits. Breaking out a cold sweat just watching that. <laughs> once again, after a really tough physical point, he comes out with calm, composed feel to finish this one. That's what I was just going to say. Look at how calm he is on this drop shot. I mean, that was perfect. Realized how far back Berrettini was behind the baseline. Didn't maybe even have to be that good, but it was inch perfect. He's won 9 of 11 on drop shots, has Alcaraz today. It's impressive stuff. Yeah. Impressive stuff and also suggests it's a good play for him. We talked a lot about how he's been able to push Berrettini back in the court. You can see Berrettini there doing his work from very near the Melbourne sign on the court. It's a good three or four meters from the baseline. Yeah, that's something we talk about so often. It's not very often that you see Berrettini being the one that's playing defense. A lot of these points have Alcaraz literally standing on the baseline and Berrettini just trying his best to try to get back on offense. The distance behind the baseline at the moment is in the favor of Alcaraz. Alcaraz is 0.66 meters behind the baseline on average and Berrettini is 0.68. 0.83, excuse me. Alcaraz yeah. 
Jones is pumped as he levels us up at four all here. Just a reminder at the Australian four, Open. Ginzo. If we reach six all in this deciding set, it will be a, a super tie break, first to ten points. It's an interesting reaction there from Alcaraz. The tension is growing. There's no doubt who the crowd is supporting. And you see Carlos Alcaraz pumping up the crowd with his hands. He's enjoying this moment right here. Again, that high top spin inside out, getting it high to the backhand Berrettini, and then he comes up a little bit short on the cross, and Alcaraz punishes that backhand down the line. That's a pattern that's been working to perfection. a forehand from Matteo Berrettini at this stage of the contest every shot every point so important keeping his composure and it's his turn to get pumped And he moves within a game. 18 year old Spanish prodigy, Carlos Alcaraz. It's been a sensational comeback from two sets to Love Down. But he now has to answer again, serving to stay in the match, 4 5, fifth set. Impossible to hit it in the net from there. Yeah, he was about as close to the net as he could have been was Berrettini. But again, just the, the pace and the spin on this forehand from Alcaraz. A great look there. He can only have been a foot from the net, but the ball just going straight down off the frame. And then to follow it up with an ace, that's the 12th ace of the match for Alcaraz. Oh, 
have not seen that big in the scoreline, the first point of this game. 15 very different to 15 love when you're serving to stay in a match. Two big first serves off the back of it. away from a deciding set tie break looking at both players records Carlos Alcaraz wait till you hear this across all levels futures challengers and tour level he's played eight deciding set tie breaks and he's won eight so suggests he's got some clutch tennis including the US Open third round last year against Stefano Tsitsipas Berrettini he's played 20 won 11 Thank lost you. nine but he's lost three of his last four. Still a couple of games to go until we get there. Yeah, you talk about the last time these two played was in Vienna last year. Came down to a third set tiebreaker where Alcar has won seven, six in the third, seven, five in the breaker. And that's another barn burner again. of these players at this stage, Nick. Is there an acceptance sometimes that it's going to take a tie to decide it, or are they just focusing on trying to get the job done before we go there? I think at the moment it's just about focusing on your service games. Get the hold here, then worry about the, then worry about the return game. But right now, just focus on each point, one point at a time. As a player, you definitely don't want to look too far ahead and already be thinking about a tiebreaker. You just got to focus on the first point, the second point, the third point. Well, after four juice games in a row to three all in this set, it's been a lot more comfortable for the server since. Job. A nice hold to serve there. Well, Melbourne Park, very busy as we move into the evening. Of course, there's an evening session still to come in the Rod Laver Arena. But we continue in the last match of the day Thank session. You. What a match it's been. Alcaraz serving once again to stay in it, 5-6. This time, Berrettini wins the first point of the return game in an impressive fashion. I mean, are you kidding me with that angle? 141 kilometers short cross court. I mean, that is ridiculous from Berrettini. Forehand, great shape. The courage of this young man, just 18 years of age, he will not back down.
There's an unforced error, no doubt about it. Forehand he'd love to have back. Yeah, he just felt the speed of Berrettini getting back into the center of the court quickly. Went for too much. on himself. 13, 14. Three hours and 55 minutes in, almost at the four hour mark. It's match point for Berrettini. Thank you. Please. set when he had 15-30 on the Alcaraz serve at 4-5 in the third, missed it, then 30 all, had it again, missed it, and now he went for it on match point and couldn't find it again. Oh, what a second serve. 157 kilometers an hour right to the line. Seven net points won, 71% for the set, 72 for the match winning at the net. And willing to come forward with everything on the line. players to the core he steadies himself he wins three points in a row Six games all. and we are into a tie break to decide this match what an effort from Carlos Alcaraz two sets to lock down he's now saved a match point and here we go a reminder, it's a, a super tie break. First to 10 and by two clear. Fasten your seat belts, ladies and gentlemen. is a man on a mission. Zero. At 18 years, 270 days old, Alcaraz has been become the youngest man to reach round of 16 at the Australian Open since 2005. And that was when Rafael Nadal did it. And he was 18 years and 241 days old. So early on in this 
deciding tiebreak, but that felt like an important point for Berrettini to win and just snap the run of points against him. Seventeen of the last nineteen first serves between these two players have gone in. These guys are serving big time first serves and big moments. Tension, the anticipation. Every point, every shot could prove decisive. to be on his front foot coming forward. Three, two, Six of eight net points, one 75% when he's coming in. And once again. to toe, haymaker versus haymaker. In many ways, the battle of the forehands, and there is still nothing between them as we change ends here at three all. Tini just taking his time, perhaps letting the heart rate settle. Wants to be in optimal condition to continue this breaker. What a treat this has been for the fans inside World Labour Arena. Two punch that Berrettini brings. Big serve, big forehand. Exactly what the doctor ordered right there.
I tried to sneak in and get it early. A big second serve from Berrettini, 166 out wide. He's been serving a lot body backhand and been able to catch Alcaraz sometimes on the backhand and now mix it up to the forehand and just too big of a swing from Alcaraz there. So Berrettini gets his nose in front. Seed Matteo Berrettini just has a hint of breathing space. shot from Alcaraz. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he felt like he had Berrettini pretty far behind the baseline, so he went for it. But Berrettini actually read that. He was there with, with some time. Maybe just had too many options. He still got his nose in front. Berrettini went to the slice, just catching Alcaraz out. And the change ends with the Italian. Still a mini break to the good at 7-5. It's already had one match point, remember Berrettini. Breaded butter all match that wide serve and then open court forehand. Used it in a big moment. Santa Padre is pumped. Goodness knows what the teams have been through. Their nerves must be shredded. Berrettini once again just two points away. A 
That's a big miss from Alcaraz. And having had one match point already, the Italian now has four more. Thank you. Matteo Berrettini, who's the boss in the battle of the forehands. A shame for Alcaraz to lose it on the double fault. He fought so hard to come back from two sets to love down, but ultimately it's Berrettini's day as he wins 6-2, 7-6, 4-6, 2-6, 7-6 in four hours and ten minutes. What a match.